Hi, my name is Gretchen Schwarzy. I'm a vascular surgeon at the University of Wisconsin, and I'm here to teach you how to use a communication tool called Best Case, Worst Case ICU. How often have you worried that your critically ill patient was unaware how sick they really were? Because they didn't understand the gravity of the situation, they or their family requested treatments with limited benefit. This frustrating experience can lead to conflict. To avoid this, and to help patients and families make difficult decisions, we developed Best Case, Worst Case ICU. Although we provide patients and families with daily updates about treatments, labs, and organ function, it's hard for them to use this information to imagine what might happen over time. So when they face a major decision, like another surgery, they don't have all the information they need. This story starts with your patient, Yara Lopez. Ms. Lopez is 76 years old and lives alone in a duplex next to her family. After an unwitnessed fall, she was intubated by EMS and admitted to the ICU early this morning with a femur fracture and subdural hemorrhage. She also has multiple comorbidities, including atrial fibrillation, chronic kidney disease, and COPD. Now your team is rounding. How can we make sure that everyone, including the family, other team members, and consultants are on the same page? Let's look at the best case, worst case graphic aid. Each column represents one ICU day. Vertical lines represent the range of possible scenarios, describing how this new illness or injury will play out over time. The star represents the best case scenario, and the box at the bottom represents the worst case scenario. Each day, a major event is recorded at the top of the column. You place a star on the line based on how the event changes the best case scenario. As time goes on, the placement of the star will go up or down, depending on how these events change the patient's overall story. This will keep everyone on the same page. During your hectic day, how can you get this done? Use your knowledge and experience to tell the story of what would happen if everything goes as well as you might hope. You do this on rounds by adding Outlook at the end of the systems-based assessment and plan. A member of your team notes what you say on the graphic aid. Let's go back to Yara. As you list the assessment and plan, what can you say about Outlook? In the best case scenario, we could get the breathing tube out today. She will need surgery for her femur fracture in a day or two. If things go well, we can get her out of the ICU and to general care. Given her other medical conditions, she'll need another week in the hospital and will probably need short-term recovery in a nursing home. Today, you might put the star here, near the top. The length of the line between the star and the box shows everyone, including her family, that while we are hoping for the best case, a lot of uncertainty remains. Whether the family is involved in rounds or you meet up with them later, the graphic aid will help them see the range of what's possible. Sadly, on repeat head CT, Yara's bleed is much worse and she needs surgery. What we had been hoping for has changed. Now, in the best case scenario, she will need more days in the ICU. Because of deconditioning, her recovery will be longer. She will need weeks to get her strength back. If we are really lucky and there are no more complications, she will eventually get home. Today, we will place the star lower on the line, showing that what we are hoping for now is different from before. Although we are hoping for the best case, what are we worried about? In the worst case scenario, Yara has irreversible brain damage. She can no longer do the things she enjoys. This could even lead to her death. By showing the range of plausible stories, it allows everyone to anticipate and prepare. When you leave the graphic aid at the bedside, Yara's family can use your notes to recall what to expect, understand that there is uncertainty, and see how things change over time. They can use the flip side to let you know about Yara's life, that she enjoys her dog Toto and baking with her grandchildren. Yara is going to be in the ICU for a while. 
Let's go back to the graphic aid. Several days pass and there are no new events. Rather than writing something new each day, simply draw an arrow from one day to the next showing that the position of the star hasn't changed. Many days with no change may actually become an event. Use your clinical judgment to figure out when lack of improvement or a new major event changes the position of the star and the story you will tell that day about what you are hoping for. Yara has been in the ICU for five days and has had one operation. Her neurologic exam remains unchanged. Her family wants to know what to expect now. When you talk to them, use the graphic aid with your daily updates to help them follow along. Yara is still very sick. What we are hoping for now is that Yara will start to wake up and be able to breathe without the machine, maybe over the next week. Even in the best case scenario, she will need several weeks in the hospital and a long recovery in a nursing home. In the worst case scenario, we are worried that her brain might not recover, that she won't wake up. She will develop more complications and die. Because she has had five days without improvement, what is most likely is that Yara's life will look different than before. She will need a lot more support. It will be hard for her to live independently and do some of the things she enjoys, like baking. By using stories, you can help Yara's family imagine the range of what is possible. By using her family's notes describing things she enjoys, you can tailor the story to show them how this injury may change her life. Over time, these daily updates will help everyone. If she gets better, she and her family can anticipate a long road to recovery. If she gets worse, her family will be prepared and the gravity of her illness will not come as a surprise. Your daily stories and the graphic aid will provide support and perspective for everyone, including other clinicians, if, in the future, there is a big decision to be made, like major surgery, or the need for prolonged mechanical ventilation. Let's review. For best case, worst case ICU, you need to do the following. Include the patient's outlook as an important part of your assessment and plan. Tell a story each day that describes the patient's expected course if everything goes as well as we might hope. Move the star in the graphic aid to show how over time, major events change the best case scenario. You haven't done best case, worst case ICU unless you complete this step. Show the range of what is possible by using storytelling to describe the worst and most likely scenarios. Talk with families using the phrases, this is what we are hoping for and this is what we are worried about as a way to frame the best and worst case scenarios. Leave the graphic aid at the bedside so everyone can see your notes and how things might play out. Ask families to use the flip side to share with you what their loved one enjoys. So what's next? Although updating patients and families is already part of your routine, try using best case, worst case ICU. See if it helps you avoid misunderstandings and conflict. No matter what happens, everyone will benefit from being on the same page.